Does it say we're live? All right, awesome. Ah, oh, there it is. All right, we're being live streamed tonight. Welcome, welcome everyone to the Word is Right. All right, Jane, I'll bump you down a little later. No, no problem there. All right, welcome to the Word is Right tonight. I'm so, so excited to be here hosting you. I'm Marissa Prada, uh, the co-creator, co-founder of the Word is Right. Uh, I am so f uh, fond of these two poets we have double featuring tonight. We have Tori Lutz, author of Prozac, <laughs> excuse me, author of Schoolyard Crushes and Prozac Prescriptions. My eye is like, it just goes to the immediate word it likes the best. Uh, so yes, yeah, Schoolyard Crushes and Prozac Prescriptions is Tori Letts' book and hot off the presses in my hot little hands, we have Sophia, award-winning poet Sophia Falco's new book. Chronicles of Cosmic Chaos in the Fourth Dimension. Uh, I got it in my hot little hands. I'm so excited about it. And it's it's a lovely book. It's a great, great cover. This is all of her, her handwriting that she did for the font of her books. It's, it's so fun. Uh, we're very excited. We'll get into those um, today as we go through the show. All right. So uh, the open mic list reads as follows. Well, okay, so the format for this evening, before we go to the list, the format this evening is, is it's uh, 6, 6, 12 my time. We'll go about 20, 25 minutes and we'll bring up our first feature. I tend to bring up the first feature, the first of the two who is in the room, that's Tori. So as long as Sophia does not have a scheduling conflict and she does not need to leave early, if that's copacetic, we will um, go about 20, 25 minutes and we'll break and we'll bring up our first feature, Tori Letts. Uh, open micers, you have about five minutes tonight each. Tori uh, and Sophia, y'all will have about 20. I'm not gonna mute anyone or ring a bell or interrupt or be a dick because I don't have a dick, but it's purple and I like it because it does what I tell it to. And it's always hard for me. Uh, but otherwise, I have no rights to uh, buzz anyone. So if you need to check to see how much time you have, of course, I, I'll do that for you. Otherwise, if you go over or you don't fit the full 20, that's fine too, all right? Uh, it's really what your heart desires this evening. All right, hang on one sec. Some more folks are coming in the room. Um, so features 20 minutes, more or less. And then we'll go back to the open mic list. We'll uh, Uzi. <laughs> Oh, let's go. Oh my God, the chat's already on fire tonight. You know what? Shit. Since I have so many erotic poets, y'all will have to tell me if you want an erotic, a new erotic piece, or you want what I wrote in, in uh, Ray Jane's workshop last night. Uh, so you'll have to vote on that and let me know. Uh, it's an erotic parody about the NFL. So if that sways your vote. One Ooh. <laughs> Um, the, uh, then we'll go back to the open mic list. We'll go another 20 minutes or so. We'll bring up our second feature, Post Sophia Falco. Yes, you must use all three of her names. And we'll go back to the open mic list. So uh, right now I have Christopher Moore. We're going to bump Jane later in the show. Lizzie, Poetcon, Chanson, Douglas, Nemo, Shockey. We'll put Jane somewhere in there. Uh, Ed Poetastic, Starchild, and Marianne. If you are not on this list and you would like to read, either send me a message or drop your name in the chat and I'll get you on the list. If you are on the list and you do not want to read uh that's totally fine too let me know and uh <laughs> the purple one is the famous push cart prize nominated one. <laughs> yes oh the day a dildo wins a push cart wait i'm gonna write that down it's the it's a new this is the writing prompt the day my dildo won a push cart <laughs> <laughs> right? Because it's time that we start recognizing erotic poetry and, uh, and, and all of that good stuff. All right, Jane, I'll get you in before we break for, uh, for Tori. All right, ground rules for tonight. Uh, please keep yourself muted unless you are the one on the mic. Uh, there, there is no censorship on this show. So you can say fucking shit and dick and pussy and all those great wonderful words. The only things you're not allowed to bring is any hate speech whatsoever. If I feel you're a threat to anyone in this room, you will be gone, baby, gone and not allowed the fuck back in. I run a tight ship, so let's please keep it professional. Remember, we are artists and this is our art form. Do not drop in the DMs of any of the performers without consent. And remember, no is a whole Answer. All right, uh, let's go. So, uh, votes for serious versus erotic. What do you guys think? I want erotic. <laughs> yeah, somebody I would say pussy. serious, I but <laughs> I would say serious, but I know it's going to be erotic. So, <laughs> sorry, right, Chris.
Christopher. I can always do serious on your show too. Don't, don't worry. Uh, all right. So some quick announcements uh, before I drop the bomb on, drop the bomb on you. Um, we have a lot of fun things uh, coming up to happen here at The Word is Right. Uh, we are launching Shocky G's new show will be once a month, it'll be the second Friday open mic of the month. We have Jane Spoken Word coming to Word is Right. Oh my God, Jane Spoken Word is gonna have a, an, an incredible permanent open mic here on the second and fourth Tuesday nights. Uh, so we're so excited to have her uh, here. Well, it's not really gonna, be an open mic, but I'll let her tell you about what it is. It's to be a poetry show. It's a delightful, uh, really not like anything else that's out there. Uh, this coming Saturday, so a week from tonight, the first Saturday of the month, we do poetry in a movie. We do an open mic in a movie. And uh, that is going to be uh, love and basketball versus poetic justice. So you got to be here in the room to vote for which one you want to watch. And we live stream it here on Zoom. And it really has become an incredibly fun way of sharing time with other poets and watching movies perhaps you never saw before. Uh, so you get a chance to do that. Uh, for what happens um, again now it says my internet's unstable can y'all hear me because I can switch to the other computer am I down you're okay right now you can back. You went quiet for like a solid minute okay so here hang on all right so so I just I'll switch audios and keep video on one and do the a different audio so I want to just take a, a moment and reflect a little bit on uh, Tyree Nichols and what and what happened um, this past uh, week and encourage all of you to continue to fight uh, with your pens and your words and the injustices uh, that we continue to see uh, on the streets and in our schools they must come to an end. So um, yeah, I just wanna take a moment of silence for, for that. All right, let's go, let's go. Let's keep our pens sharp about us so we can keep his, his memory alive as well. All right, so we're gonna go into erotic. <laughs> Y'all fuck me. All right. You said you wanted erotica. I'm going to give you erotica. So I expect, I expect the chat to be lighting up because I'm throwing it all out there live on, live on the Facebook page. All right. This is titled, I want that job. It's new shit. Can you imagine being the person who gets to fit the cup on NFL players? I want that job. Who would I most want to fit? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Thank you. Randall Cobb, Devontae Adams, and AJ Dillon. Three on one, my three wishes one and done. Go Pat, go. Listen, this is a vital part of penile safety. We must protect the head. With all the CTE, STDs, concussion protocol, drive the ball, pass the ball, run past option there, bulk may need more padding. We must protect the head. I want that job. No unsportsmanlike conduct. I want some sporty man misconduct. Cock block from the back. Let me blow your whistle. Throw the flag. Penalties are piling up. False starts. Meds can be helpful. Rough my passer, ass slapper, passive interference, pass rating glory holes, must move the chains. Unnecessary, necessary roughness, personal foul, encroachment, my crotch fines will be imposed. Helmet to helmet, met hell, both heads in my mouth. Can I get a medic? Save them from mayhem like me. Play call, snap the ball, delay of game, pre-snap, take two pills and call me in the morning. 
first and 69. End zone, green zone, first down, second and 100 orgasms more to go. Return for touchdown there. You gotta play a lot of ball. Oh, captain, my captain, the C on your jersey, you know my spot of the foul strip the ball. Take it all off. Interception sex tip the ball. Let me measure your jock. I want that job. Blocked kick, grass or turf, sky or dome on your knees in the snow. Midfield muff dive. Marissa Prada, school of the clits. Gloves padded, pads, mouth guard, helmets, grass stains, screams of the crowd first and pleasure Prada, rushing yards, but be patient, sad sidelines incomplete, just a tip, break the plane, hit my tight upright, I just need another one, threw it in front of my behind, under overthrow, jump your balls, control the ball, play the field, the goal is to land this job, punt return, top pick, bounces off breast, backside, route combination, I our life injuries we must protect the head what a throw what a load that was huge when fully engorged beat that defender slapped my ass right over the fingertips tackle three on one head in the game head in the head game fully horizontal inside leverage pressure off the off the edge ball hog yes i am call me the screen machine running backs two fingers in my locker room good talk Dirty direct TV to my V. Pray for a miracle to excel in this organization. Line of scrimmage. I will wider see you and your tight ends. Quarter corner back that ass up after reviewing the play. Two minute warning coming to an end. Running back to me because your dick will miss me. Hell yes, I want that job. Here's my resume. Poem. <laughs> Let's go! Yeah! Oh, I don't want to sun down. Woo! Woo! Man! You I'm going to have to get a Kleenex. Sorry. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Let's go. Yes, that's my dream come true. All right. Uh, we're going to go back to the open mic list. I feel really bad that Christopher has to follow that, but I'm sure he'll bring us back down into reality land. Uh, we'll Damn, ahead. it's like you read my mind. I was just thinking, how am I going to follow that? Oh, my God. You were a mind reader. Don't worry. Marissa, yeah. The yeah. next anthology, should be, you should call it Seriously Erotic. Seriously Erotic? For the next women's erotic anthology. Okay, I'll write that down. Seriously. And with a suggestion, you don't have to. <laughs> And maybe it could be women and non-binaries. Mm. Well, what I was thinking of, instead of All doing men, a men's one next time, I'll just do everyone. I'll just open it to anyone. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. And and I, I, I so I might, well, okay, we'll, we'll move on. Uh, but yes, I have a couple titles to throw around. If anyone wants to weigh in on them, you're more than welcome to. All right, so we'll bring up Christopher. Hopefully we we bought him an extra minute so that the room could chill down a little um we'll go christopher lizzie jane we'll see where we're at on time uh and then possibly at that time bring up uh tori all right christopher okay um because i do not know what to read um someone give me a number between 10 and 80. 69 oh boy <laughs> uh okay um <clears throat> this one's called icarus ponders maybe i shouldn't get burned this time especially after the fall i had the last time i am only human after all and probably shouldn't soar with goddesses if i escape my prison should i rescue others should i save sisyphus from his burdened boulder and what of the Titan Prometheus? Should I save his organ from being ripped out? There is the possibility that I might burn again, but it might be worth it to save the others. Uh, did you say I have three minutes or? So open mic readers have up to five, so feel free to keep your time. Uh, okay, someone give me another number. Like any number between 10 and 70. Eight. 
Let's see. I heard eight and 42. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so eight is actually the foreword of the book. So <laughs> um, I guess I'm doing 42. <laughs> Slate Labyrinth. Am I the mythological beast or is it somehow hunting me? And I'm just having, and I just haven't run into it yet. I always thought the builders were hidden boxed me in, so the status quo stays in order. Years go by, and I am still unable to reach an exit, although others I seem to find soon disappear so easily. Perhaps I was the master builder of my own maze, with burnt ashes of the map by the entrance to help lead me out. Uh... Okay, someone give me another number. 30, okay. Mm, let's see, 30. <clears throat> this is called Aphrodite's Bird. Soaring with its wings stretched out, this bird sent by a vengeful goddess, eyes locked onto its sighted target ripping off skin and tissue of my chest, devouring my heart as if it's a full course dinner. This vile bird leaves after it has done the deed. My precious organ regrows over nightfall, but as the sun's rays start to appear in the sky, I have to run away again once more as the creature begins to hunt yet again. That's all I got for tonight. Thank you. All right, let's go. Christopher Moore, y'all can unmute your mics and give it up for Christopher, please. Christopher also runs um, poetry with Christopher Moore, more poetry with Christopher Moore on the second and third Wednesday night of the month here. Second and fourth. Did I say second and third? Second and fourth. Yeah, <laughs> that's Sorry. okay. It's it's there's a lot of shows like we got now, but I'm kind I'm kind of getting them down. Uh, second and fourth Wednesday night of the of the month, he does his. It's an incredible uh, open mic, so y'all can go to it, and it's so much fun. And I love that everyone's events are, are different, and sometimes you have different people going to different ones, and so you find the vibe that you like and just uh, keep keep going for it. All right, next up we got uh, Lizzie, and then Jane's spoken word. <clears throat> Hello, Beanie Blessings. Uh, you can find me here at The Word is Right every uh, first and third Tuesdays of the most month. I host an open mic called Dead Pan Dope. It's for all mediums of art, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come through, hang out. Uh, we do some I statements and some writing too. Um, this Tuesday, which is the fifth Tuesday of the month that we do here, sometimes I'm going to be hosting a Shakespeare Sean workshop. We're going to decipher uh, some of his and create our own. Um, it's only $5 to attend. So if you're interested in that, visit our Words Right page, or you can DM me uh, for how to register for that. That'll be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here at the Word is Right. I'm excited to work on that craft with everyone. Sonnets are actually my avenue to spoken word. So um, it's very, it's very close to my heart. All right. I'm going to, um, I'm going to do three for you tonight. The first one is a pan coup, and it's dedicated to all the MILFs. God, let me <laughs> fuck the repression out of them. That was for all the MILFs. Um, I'm going to do a nine by nine pan coup. Um, and for those that don't know what pan coups are, they are a style of poetry I created. Um, and if you're interested in that, you can get my book, Kunda Beanie, through Red or Green Books, which is Marissa's Press. And it was nominated for a Pushcart Prize. So thank you, Red or Green Books. This is called Sweet Scribes. I believe God chooses those who have the delicate touch to be a poet, the discipline to craft verse of vulnerability, unafraid to speak our minds unapologetically and not worry who will judge us. We compose bars always underscored by romance. From the first word to the last, we carefully choose how to pen a prose fragrant like a rose. We blend all types of poetry into our mix for humanity to lick our scripture clean, delectably, deliciously, deservingly blessed. And the final one I will leave you with, just in free verse, 
It's titled Water. I feel most liberated when I let my tears flood the shores of earth. I refuse to hold myself back any longer. The salt that flows out of my eyes and into the sands and soils we live and breathe will always be a continuation of life, a release my body and heart needs in order to evolve and problem solve. My bloodshot eyes and snot metal to freedom. My bodily fluids are rather sticky because tissues will never be absorbent enough to collect my emotions. I am adaptable, but not pliable. I will always need room for growth, allowing myself to emote how my planets want me. I move through water. I am water. I escape through me. Thank you, Bean Blessing. Let's go, Deadpan Lizzie, y'all. Unmute your mics, please. Give it up for Elizabeth Sophia Sterell. Thank you. Yes, Lizzie. Every time. Thank you, Jen. The first and third Tuesday of the month, right? You guys are going to be Tuesday yep. sisters. It's going to be so awesome. I can't wait. Um, maybe you'll do a special show on a on an extra Tuesday uh, in sometime in the year where the two of you feature. I would come and pay for that, no doubt. Uh, it would be an amazing um, a thing that you guys. And then you have Nick and Christopher on Wednesday. It just happened to be that way. It's not like we plan this stuff, right? It's very organic how it happens at Word Is Right. Uh, things and people just they pop into our laps. And I'm so excited that Arsene has joined our poetry community as well. Uh, we'll be announcing her show soon, as soon as we lock down dates on that. So let's go. All right, my Tesoro sister, Jane Spoken Word, you are up now. And then um, uh, Tori will, will break and have you um, up. Cool. Good evening, poets. I'm gonna do two pieces tonight. The first one is called The Sister Don't Whisper. Liberated by the written word, I am not my past life blurred, despite what you've heard. My future transferred from a telegraph of the past. Now at last, I am this body. I am these emotions. I am the immortal story. I am the beauty in imperfection. Escape from the shadows of dark, from a tortoise shell safety, I depart. From an abandoned bus at the station's part, a poet of the street beat, I'm a motherfucking warrior. I sharpen my pen and I shatter all barriers. Poetry released from an incarcerated mind, floating bars, I did my time. Getting back to my spit with some new shit. Who but the rhymer will bring truth to bear? Who but the rhymer will verse tragedies of despair? Pens dipped in the blood of suffering hearts, destroying deceptions, tearing lies apart. Tumbling words that dangle in my throat, rendering remedies and antidotes, bleeding out into rivers of ink. Drowning in rhymes of missing links where heaven meets hell. No time to think. Collecting dreams from broken machines, melting metaphors and scorching similes, haunting the streets with spoken word poetry. I spit shit you don't want to hear. I spit rhymes to strip you bare. I'm as harmless as a neutron bomb. I hit your shit with chloroform. I am your audacious, bodacious, beautiful sister, and you better fucking know this sister. Don't whisper. <laughs> Peace, yo. That's a sister. Don't whisper. That's good. Now, this piece here um, is from my book, Word Against the Machine. And Word Against the Machine really is all my poetry that doesn't leave me on how ill humanity is treating humanity. I just, I just can't take it. And just so I have to write and I, you know, that's what I do. I used to march in the sixties with my signs and my going to jail and everything else. But now I just write poetry. And this piece is called Reparations. Talking to shadows standing for truths. Black lives matter. Have you ever seen white people hanging from poplar trees? Have you ever seen white people hosed down by police? 
Have you ever seen white people set upon by police dogs? Have you ever seen white people burned, beaten, and butchered for whistling at a black girl? Have you ever seen white people smothered to death for selling a cigarette on the street? Have you ever seen white people riddled with bullets for brandishing a phone? Have you ever seen white people die in jail for a broken headlight? Have you ever seen white people gunned down in a park for playing with a toy gun? Have you ever seen white people sit at the back of the bus? Have you ever seen white people shot in the back while they're hopping a fence? Have you ever seen white people murdered while walking down the street with a bag of Skittles? Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen? Have you ever seen? I'm talking to you, white people. What is wrong with you? Where is your outrage? Where is your humanity? Where is your sense of justice, your religiosity? Because you know your God will judge you on that do unto others shit. So if you do nothing to right these wrongs, you should be ashamed. Yes, that's right. You should be ashamed. Silence is death. Talking to shadows. Standing for truths. Black lives matter. They matter to me. Peace, yo. Don't be silent. Yes. 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 Y'all unmute your mics, please. Give up for Jane's spoken word. Woo! Thank you all. Nice. Thank you, poets. Well done. She said, silence is death. That's Black right. Black lives matter. They matter to me. And they, they matter to me, and they matter to you, and they matter to every single person in this room. Um, if they don't get the fuck out, I have sorry and not sorry. Um, but Black Lives Matter to all of us here. Um, uh, so like, yeah. Yeah. And so I would just say to Nancy, yes, I agree. Celebrate Black History Month. But fuck that. Celebrate celebrate black history every fucking minute every, black every fucking life. day until people get it right until they yeah. stop fucking killing black people and brown people and other than fucking white people look at con con even had to turn on her camera for that let's go let's go she got me on a fucking roll tonight i'll tell you because i just can't take this shit i yeah i feel you i feel you and i'm writing i'm writing I'm trying to do yes. my part to write our part. And, you know, at this anthology, maybe it'll do something, maybe it won't, but maybe it will. You know, all I can do is, is keep writing, keep publishing, keep yep. pushing forward. That's all any of us can do is just don't stay quiet, uh, speak up, even if you're the only one to speak up and everyone That's else right. unfriends you, fuck them, let them go That's right. because That's they right. are part of the problem. Uh, so yep. my friends who get all in a tiff when I post shit like, uh, <laughs> why are we uh, not sharing our history, our shared history in the classroom? Uh, mm -hmm. My friends, they throw a fit sometimes and sometimes they unfriend me and I'm totally okay with that. Go, uh, because you're not part of the solution. Um, I don't know what the solution is yet. Um, but I know it is not doing nothing. Uh, we must do something. And all of us doing one thing uh, is a lot of little things and can make Word a big up. difference. Like Word. laying bricks, right? Laying bricks and you have a fucking road. Like <laughs> one brick at a time, let's lay. Yep. Well, let's go. Silence is death, says Jane Spoken Words. Let's not be silent. All right. I'm so excited to be bringing up our first feature tonight, Tori Lutz. Uh, she is part of the next 10 here at Red or Green Books, and her book, Squared Crushes and Prozac Prescriptions, is just phenomenal. Uh, it really, really is an, a wonderful book. I'm so honored to have uh, been able to publish her. Like she said, yes. I feel like she said, yes. Uh, uh, pick out the dress, right? Uh, it is. It's kind of like getting married to someone when you decide to allow them to publish your baby and um, and you get to watch them grow. It's a dream come true of mine and see she is uh, certainly um, 
worthy of it. And I can't wait to see what her next book is going to look like. Not that she has to publish it here, but if she does, it's great. But if not, I can't wait to get it anyway and love her and support her. All right. Tori Letts is a poet from Miami, Florida. She has received degrees in English from Florida State University and Columbia University. Her passion for writing stems from her passion of reading, and she has explored songwriting, poetry, short and long fiction, academia, and journalism throughout her life. Her love of poetry in particular was fostered through her work and performance with the Poetic Lyricism Organization in Tallahassee. Her debut collection, Schoolyard Crushes and Prozac Prescriptions, is out now. Her handles are Tori Let's Poetry, and you can find her on Linktree, Tori Let's Poetry. Um, and we'll go through her cash handles so y'all can leave her a tip. Uh, unmute your mics, give a freaking excited round of applause to our first feature reader tonight, Miss. Tori Lutz. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. Thank you for that uh, introduction, Marissa. Your introductions always make me so like giddy and I'm just like, oh, <laughs> Um, so thank you for that. Um, I dropped my link tree in the chat um, right now. I'll drop it again at the end of my set. You can find my Instagram on there. You can find the link to buy my book on there if you haven't already. Anything really relevant is pretty much there or on my Instagram. Um, so uh, today I'm going to read, I'm going to pick three from here. Um, which is my book. It was published in December of 2021. So I'm also going to do some new stuff. And then if I have time, maybe I'll pick some like older kind of classics to like I wrote in college. Um, wow, that just made me feel about a hundred years old. <laughs> um, okay, so I am going to start with a poem called Resurrecting Ruins. Bruising my knees hits differently on crooked cobblestones that once led the way home. I think it was a lifetime and a half ago that road was smooth, dependable, free of bloodstains and bad memories. I wish I could have showed it to you then. The smoking gray stones gently strangled by ivy and lavender and the twinkling dust I've crafted my heart from. I feel like you might have wanted to memorize it then understand the gentle curves and scenic backdrops, but all that I can offer now are plunging cliffs and poisoned forests, but I will try. I will bruise and bloody my hands and knees until the deep sand smudges wash the grime and fill the cracks and I can lead you down a road worth following. Okay, um, I'm seeing that the villanelle in my book melted Lizzie's heart. So I think maybe that means I should do that. Um, so this is called cul-de-sac. With lessons learned on roads that never end, I'm sure I've seen all I can see until I've lost my equilibrium again. I learned to ride my bike when I was 10. The cul-de-sac would test my grit and will with lessons learned on roads that never end. I gave my youth to feel what love had meant. Although I'd say the ache was worth the thrill, I've lost my equilibrium again. The pains that come with growing up don't mend. This child has learned to fight, to hide, to kill with lessons learned on roads that never end. I sat and cried outside a CVS. They had no script to get my pills refilled. I've lost my equilibrium again. And so it seems that just around the bend will always be a way to take a spill with lessons learned on roads that never end. I've lost my equilibrium again. So that's for Lizzie. Um, this one's called I Drown in My Own Spotlights. I can see myself in all I experience. The protagonist of my own story, the self-absorbed anxiety that rests underneath the placid waters of my humility. When I see a swallow, I don't see a bird. I see my panic scrambled. Oh shit, I set my alarm for PM weekday pandemonium. I see the harmony to my morning coffee. When I see a pen, I don't see stationery. I see my sword, my lifeline, my claim to fame and the tool behind my own signature. When I see you with her, I don't see a love story. I see my own reflection scattered among the shards and dust of a shattering mirror. And then the last one I'm going to do from my book is called Birthday Cake Frosting. I always save one candle on my birthday cake to wish on you. 
I almost don't even want to set it ablaze, but when has it ever been less than a forest fire with you? I secretly hope that the too sweet frosting will give me a cavity that will taste like you, taste like the candy in your voice that's given me such a sweet tooth. I leave a chair empty at the most crowded parties, even if a dozen people are left standing because I'm secretly hoping it'll be filled by you. I'm not supposed to tell anyone my wish, but if I spill it to you, will you show? I turn up the volume on my phone so I won't miss the ghost of a phone call just in case you finally decide to haunt me outside my dreams this year. That's the thing about hope, isn't it? You can never really talk yourself out of it. Okay, and now I'm going to do some newer stuff since, you know, I have written poems in the past year. Um, so this one is called Body Paint. My body is a motherfucking canvas. One I have not always been kind to. It has been left in burning buildings, drowned in thick paint, and damaged by knives for people who've indicated it would look better as confetti. My body is not here to decorate your party, but it is here to dance, to carry me from room to room as we outgrow the spaces we occupy, and it's past time to stop caring about the people we leave behind in the process. They have always been free to move with us, and this work of art can still thrive spotlit in its own gallery. My body is not Barbie size, but at least it won't snap under its own weight. It is strong. It has learned to showcase its pain as beauty, even when I punched my own holes in it for not looking differently. My body is a money-making machine, so long as I hate it properly. If I'm not feeling myself today, I'm still expected to lie about it, because to be devastatingly insecure is to be humble, is to be humble, is to be gentle, is to be feminine, is to be on the right road to heaven, who cares if the vehicle is a casket as long as my makeup is fresh. My body is a Jackson Pollock style masterpiece. Every ugly color I or you or he or she has slung upon it has melded into a goddamn rainbow. And I know any trademark critic who says they can make the exact same design is not unkind, but foolish. And I pity them. No canvas should spend its lifetime pristine, fresh, blank. And regardless of whether it is beautiful to you, my body is proud to say that it's the spitting image of a flawless mess of paint. Okay, and this is one that I wrote in response to the tragedy at Club Q and as an extension to every other hate crime shooting, um, namely against the LGBTQ community, but really every hate crime based shooting. It's called Bullet to the Heart. Hate is violent because it knows it is losing. They aim bullets at our hearts because that is what scares them. Hate is the ash of the worlds it has consumed. Love is the downpour that cleanses the debris that etches the rainbow. We are tired, but we are still beating on. Okay. Um, and this one is a 2022 love poem um, called Dancing on Type Ropes, just to get us a little less sad. My mother says I cry too much, but maybe it's because I've survived too much, worked my ass off just to come full circle yet again too much, felt deafened by the drop of a hairpin on carpet too much, hit play again on games I know I always lose too much, did too much, said too much, been too much. But my God. Just sitting next to you on my worn out couch, tension delicate as a gossamer, a hair trigger, a sheet of glass that only we'd ask to dance on. I feel like just enough. I'm not 16 anymore. I've been kissed before, but not like this. It's bliss. It's reborn innocence with a twist. I'm doing acrobatics on high wires I'd never come near before. It's been years or more since I felt this goddamn beautiful in a sweatshirt. I think my cheeks can get addicted to smiling like this. I've never had sugar this sweet without paying for it in cavities and stomach aches. The taste is me mesmerizing. Poetry sparking against the tip of my tongue. I want to tell you everything. Stories and secrets, confessions of weakness, fears and desires, blizzards and fires, the portrait I've spent a lifetime creating. 
I want to know which colors are your favorite and what you think of my line work. I want you to feel safe enough to share right back to know that I am infamously incapable of finding you to be too much. I hope you live similarly. I hope you prefer planting roots to running shoes. I hope you cry when things are beautiful and laugh when they are sad, that you love how I dance even when it's bad and that you don't scare easy and I don't mean with movies and that you feel the vibrations and the silence when you share space with twin flames. I don't know how to read your mind yet or how much is too much or what we are creating. It's fragile, it's delicate, it's new. But is it all right how much I adore dancing on tight ropes with you? Okay, <laughs> um, I am going to do one more newer 2022 one, I think, and then I'm going to do a throwback poem. Maybe I'll do two more newer ones um, and then one throwback poem. I even fucked up communion. I choked on the blood of Christ. The cup of salvation became my worst temptation, served sharp and sour straight from Satan to my lips in a bloodstained chalice. Nothing about its grip could be considered sacred. I've traded love, trust, friendship for the pressed grapes that used to look like sunsets, cut my fingertips on broken glass and my tongue on harsh words I never thought would cross my lips, screamed into dusty pillows and worn out steering wheels that it's not worth it, but I still don't stop, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop anyway. Will it even be enough for me to turn away if I'm staring at a bottle at the bottom of a grave? Okay. And on that note, this one is called Flowers Die Anyway. I don't want your lilies at my funeral. I don't want your tears saturating my coffin. They have no place in my space of rest. If you had no interest in eulogies and love letters, dressing downs or apologies for me while I was still breathing, you don't get to partake in them when I can't speak back. Can't question your intentions or get to share the lines I had written for better or for worse with ire or while smitten about you too. Closure is a lie that helps us lie better in the dark. To sleep tight at night so the nightmares don't bite and the guilt doesn't muddy the soles of your red bottoms. When I'm gone, I don't transform into a box you need to check off or a door to finally gently mercifully ease shut. If the only time you consider the grass to be greener around me is when it is freshly resting above me, you don't deserve to water it. The flowers my body nourishes in life and in death are labors of love for those who help prune them, who loved them when they were dirt, when they were hardest to love, when there was no guarantee there'd ever be a blossom to show for it. Do not misread my elegy. Arrogance thrives where empathy fails. I know our tragedy has two sides to the tombstone. I know I grabbed the dirt scraped from the floor of my rock bottom and blinded you with it. I know when you left, it wasn't in the middle of a party or an acceptance speech laced with words shaped like roses celebrating you. I know my hugs felt like handcuffs and my tears tasted of acid. And I was so consumed by conducting this cacophony that was warping into a death march of flame games and breaking bottles and wailings designed to take everyone in the audience down with me. But I always thought you were there to walk away. There would be more rubble left in the wake. Cries instead of silence, mourning instead of aversion, ruins instead of air too thick to choke on, yet too transparent to watch drift above my reach. If you could walk away so easily, keep walking. If you could change the topic so quickly, keep talking. If your image of me at my worst was enough to define me by for the rest of my life, it should suffice for the obituary. I don't want your lilies at my funeral. I don't want your carnations on my grave. Okay, and I have one more for you. This one I wrote in college, and I think it's my favorite from college. Um, it's called Nice Guys. So you're a nice guy. You're the exception to the rule of the answer to my prayers, the proof that goodness can come with the dick. Yet you belittle me for being afraid of you. You call me sexist and ignorant and uptight because I am unable to see your superhero-like chivalry at first glance. And then you tell me that you understand. Put yourself in my shoes. 
When you came to college, you bought cologne and condoms and booze. When I came to college, I bought mace and a pocket knife and a rape whistle. When you were in high school, you were taught how to have safe sex while I was taught how to avoid being sexually assaulted. When you talk to a woman, you fear if the conversation will be successful and if you will say the right things and if she will be receptive to them. When I talk to a man, I fear being sexually harassed or drugged or pressured to be something that I'm not so you don't understand. The, you don't know the fear that has been beaten into me by lessons from adults or pressures from our culture or personal experiences that have made me never want to leave my room again when women are trained by significant others to present our open mouths for a dick to fit into upon request, when women are expected to dress to impress while also keeping ourselves covered so as not to be asking for it, when women are shown time and time again that if they do not respond accordingly to an unsolicited compliment, they will be cursed, ridiculed, insulted, and threatened when women are brought up to always travel in groups and never go out alone and always be responsible for their own safety because you can't trust a stranger to be a decent human being. Tell me when we were supposed to learn to assume the best, to live without fear, to look at you and know you are one of the nice guys who won't rape us, who won't hate us, who won't take us and break us and make us feel less than human, more like a doll to use at your own convenience. When were we supposed to learn? to trust you. And I actually do have time for another poem. <laughs> so I guess I do have one more. Um, this one was also from college and it is called Dear Anonymous, about one of the nice guys. <sighs> Dear Anonymous, I can still feel your skin, still taste your mouth on my tongue, See your grin in my dream, smell your scent on my shirt when I never wanted to in the first place. I still hear your insincere words slurred. Your face, though blurred, still burns its memory into my mind. I tried to tell you that I wasn't yours. Wasn't yours to borrow, keep, release. Wasn't yours to take, break, sedate. Wasn't yours to use, peruse, or abuse. Wasn't yours. Wasn't yours. I still can't say your name. Though God knows I think little else on some days, I still mindlessly search myself for things that I know aren't there. The things that you took from me, the things that I need for an ounce of sanity, believe me, their absence is heavier than the sum of their parts. My self-respect did little to make itself known, but the whole it left shattered dignity, assurance, and faith as well by not being there to string them together. The collapse provided a sick flick of the domino that destroyed love, trust, and lust as well. Boom! Each domino falls harder than the last, and their thuds project deafening echoes of the past. Pride, importance, stability, innocence fall with a crash, and I am left with nothing. But a jagged ring of broken dominoes that used to stand with promise and strength and courage around my pillar of self-respect. And it sickens me that one in three American women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. 68% of these cases will go unreported. 98% of rapists will, rapists will never spend a day in jail. And they, like you, will go on to ruin someone else's life over and over. And yet no one wants to hear about it anymore. It's just the same story told again and again. No one cares just how long I lie awake in my bed. No one cares just how much you mess with my head, dear Anonymous. Next time, just get consent. Thank you. And I'm going to drop my link tree again. You got, you, you, got, you got time for another. I mean, you, I you do? have like three minutes left. So oh, cool. it's up to you. If, if it just certainly right. take more than three, if, if, you know, if you go over, it's, it's okay. I, no one's going to argue. You want to read something else. All right, so I'll do um, the follow-up to that same trauma story uh, that's in my book. Um, we've returned, we've come full circle. Um, this is called The Night I Almost Ruined a Life. I coated my throat in Irish whiskey to prove I could keep up with the boys. The two of us were drinking like Hemingway, real writers. The last one still sober wins. Last one still standing wins. Last one with a hope of a memory of the entire ordeal gets the trophy. Secretly, I knew I didn't want to win. I love winning, but I love forgetting more. 
slicing my thoughts into ice cubes to fill my glass, washing it down with swigs straight from the bottle. Poor John Doe had to deal with me. Poor John Doe had to lift me onto his bed. Poor John Doe had to remind me of everything that had just happened and brew me tea, had to chase me half naked around the parking lot until I realized I had nowhere else to go and came back inside. Let me a book to pretend to read. Gave me a pen to write my damn self a letter. Didn't sleep until 5 a.m. Almost had his life ruined when I pondered telling anyone anything I remembered or imagined. His hand on my thigh, his fists around my arms, his sweat on my skin. Maybe that's why I still can't say his name. Maybe that's why I couldn't ruin his life back. I hope the next girl is less forgiving. I hope she shows her teeth and is out for blood, his blood, blood to refill her own veins and uses ink for his sentencing. I hope John Doe will never be the same. I hope he will never forget her like he did me. And then I will do one more. Um, this is one of my favorites to perform. I know it's Nick Paleologos' favorite from my book. Um, shout out to Nick. This is called Suffocating. Breathe in, breathe out. On a scale of one to 10, how are you feeling today? One meaning one foot in the grave and the other barely grabbing the edge. 10 meaning tenacious, vivacious, and every other aceous that can describe how elated you are. Maybe you're feeling a five if you're doing just fine. There is no right answer. Of course, unless you consider anything below a four the right answer. Four, because we care for you and we can't let anything bad happen so let's let that shit lock that shit down before it becomes a problem because we can't have you i mean you i mean your brain shutting down on us now but answer honestly on a scale of one to ten how are you feeling today no pressure but you aren't the only one with problems and we need to know how serious this is before we can move on move on can you at least say a six sorry sick of this no at least a six i'll just jot down seven if it's all the same to you then you look chipper enough today keep that head up we all know what happened when you last reached a two, a two as in too fucking bad. You've got shit to do. I think we should aim for an eight by tomorrow. If you ate before tomorrow, we could even put a nine, but I'm not sure you're there yet. It's asinine to shoot too high. So how about that seven again? What? Three. That won't do. You see that has to be documented, prioritized, considered a problem. Other people have real problems. Can't you see? We don't have time for a crisis. If you're gonna fuck up, at least do it right. Breathe in breathe out and there and i'll drop the link tree one more time oh my god you guys <laughs> that is feature mike stripper feature reader this the first feature reader this <clears throat> Corey Lutz. thank you let's go let's wow go. i was blown away the whole way through unbelievable wow amazing all right, if we were in a you. coffee shop or a brewery or a cafe and <clears throat> we just had this incredible presentation, we would have the hat going around, right? And we would be asking folks to put a couple bucks in the hat for, for our future readers. Um, Tori Lutz's Venmo is T-O-R-I dash Lutz, L-U-T-Z. Her cash app is Tori Lutz and her PayPal is Tori Lutz at gmail.com. Sometimes I, I think, you know, if you're like me, we go to a lot of events and we can't afford to like big tip everyone all the time. We just can't. But uh, if you, you know, there's, there's 21 people in the room now. If everyone put, you know, three or four bucks in each of the features uh, tip jars today, that's a lot. Buy them a gallon of gas, buy them a cup of coffee. It, it, it's a lot, right? And if you're thinking in the back of your mind, well, I'm not going to send Tori Let's three fucking dollars. That's fucking cheap. You're fucking wrong because if <laughs> everyone who said that actually sent her three or four bucks, it makes a big difference, right? I mean, we're talking about the fact that, you know, we're, we're putting the word is right on uh, predominantly for free for folks to spread their work, to promote their work, uh, to entertain the masses, to create change and to inspire revolution, right? So the fact that you're here today, we, we love that you're here. Please just don't do nothing. Uh, help support our features. The best thing you could do is get a copy of her book. Um, in fact, buy two copies of her book. I say this every time, right? Buy two copies, one for you and one to give away. Because both of these featured readers this evening, 
and their books should be read by everyone. I, I believe everyone would really, really love both of these featured readers and their, their books of poetry. So don't just buy one, buy two. You know, if you're, if you need something out of the gig, then just buy a book. Uh, that is uh, not nothing and she will sign it and she will send it to you. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. If you're watching this video back, perhaps on YouTube or on Facebook, if you um, go to the Facebook event page, all of her handles are there, but hopefully you go back and rewind the video and write down, uh, write down her cash handles. But all of, all of the handles for our features are on the event page. I don't know, my camera sucks, but uh, it's all there. So you just have to go to the Word is Right Facebook events, find today's events and everything, including the bios of where to find our, our feature readers are there. So um, her uh, link tree is Tori Lutz Poetry and Tori Lutz across Venmo, uh, Cash App and PayPal. All right, so let's go. Just please don't do nothing, right? That's the moral of the story. Uh, catching up on these things. All right, so uh, we're gonna go back to the open mic list. <clears throat> we have Pocon. Uh, let's see if she's in a place where she can drop a bomb. Drop a bomb on me, baby. Uh, Terry Rose Dritson's in the room. Welcome, Terry Rose. I added you to the list. Uh, if po Pocon was, it looked like she was perhaps in the supermarket, which is like a great place to throw down some fucking poetry, uh, right? Throw some tomatoes or something and say, I'm pissed about this. Uh, maybe they'll be able to, uh, you know, who knows. Uh, so Poetcon, message me and let me know when you're ready to go. Otherwise, I have Chance On, Douglas, Mimo, Shaki, uh, Shaki G, my apologies, Poetastic, Starchild, Marianne Peterson, and Terry Rose Jerson. Uh, that is the list. If you would like on the list and you're not, let me know. If you're not reading, then let me know and I will remove you from that. Uh, at some point, uh, maybe in, in the next 20 minutes, we'll break and we'll bring up poet Sophia Falco, <laughs> award-winning poet Sophia Falco, and talk about her book and get ready for her set. All right, Chance on, you ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready. Let's go. Uh, and also a little blurb about Chance on. Uh, Chance on does a, a haiku workshop. Uh, the third, um, hang on, back up. My brain's okay. catching up the second and fourth Sunday of the month. It's because we recently changed it because now we have out loud. The second and fourth Sunday of the month, uh, he leads a haiku workshop. He has been uh, doing this haiku battle to get into the Guinness Book of World Records for most haiku. We're so excited for him. And he also runs the Postcard Poets program here at Word is Right. So if you're excited and you perhaps want to do the Postcard Poets program, it's a free program. Okay. And you just, uh, you get a, a list of addresses. You have no idea who you're sending to and you can send uh, postcards from your area to anyone on the list. And it is a really fun way to connect with poets, uh, write poetry, prose, haiku, sinru, whatever you would like. All right, I'm sorry, Chance On. Now that I've thoroughly introduced you, uh, have at it. All right, so I have, um, I have six haiku to read. I'm ready to heal but I'm unwilling to feel all the pain I bear. Succulent pink lips, the kind that's made for kissing, need quality time. Blood stains the asphalt, avarice and, and foolishness was the cause of death. Such young casualties seem to be hunting season. They're out for young blood hid behind their shields, crime against humanity. Now they're behind bars. Silence, betrayal. Tongues on mute keep death coming. It's time to speak up. Thank you. Let's go, let's go. Yes, on bird. Let's go. You can't heal what you can't feel. Oh, uh, man. <clears throat> All right, let's go. Welcome, Rich Boucher uh, is in the building. Very excited to have him here. Welcome, welcome, Rich Boucher. All right, uh, next up we got Douglas, followed by Nemo, uh, and then Shockey, and then we'll see where we're at and break for uh, break for Sophia. Hey guys, 
Okay, so I have three for you tonight. Um, inspired by uh, Marissa a little bit. Um, this one is a little bit more sensual, I guess, in nature. Uh, it is called Love Language. She gazed at me adoringly, her expressive eyes fiery as hot coals, as entreated sparks. Kiss from sweet lips, limitless depth of affection, bottomless. Facial expression serendipitous, she scans me up and down. I don't wear a crown, she witnesses subterranean nobility. Nary has a moment passed, the longing for close him be realized. Transfixed irises align, opulence and observation, we are each other's Midas. Spinning golden in moments outlasting time, triviality of rhyme can't begin to encapsulate her hips, Shimmy in tapestry's moment unfurling as songs blare from inconspicuous speakers. Dialectical rot smells surely intoxicate. Ginger tendrils rest against well-formed face. A lesson in pure kindness, her soft fingers rest on my chest. Breasts bobbing, sweat, sweet sweat, perspiring. Feeling adulation from myriads of sources, succulent sustenance could be plant-based as we photosynthesize enriched, tilled soil shared by twin souls. That's the first one. Um, this one is going to be in a forthcoming anti-gun violence anthology. Uh, by Gnashing Teeth Publishing. Uh, it's called Code 3. Melee breaks out. Punches swung with gavels gravity. Call chimes in. 2 a.m. Texas time. Code 3 emergency. Midtown nightclub brawl. Belligerence. Sheer brutality. Cars careen in parking lot. Sh sh shots fired. Shots fired. Masses startled. Slugs ricochet. Bullet riddled woman wilts. Collateral damage. Emergency overload. Whisked. To hospital, soul now officer frantically responds, gun cocked, bleed back retaliation. Fearless felon charged with possession, reckless endangerment, three counts. Aggravated assault, smug smile, no escape from justice, citizen sick of crime. I'm uptick. Assailant, only 25. Prime of life, rife with rap heat. Won't be snuggling in bed tonight. Cuffed in custody. True potential snuffed. Unfulfilled. Misplaced ambition. Forced to commune with conscience. Prison of his own making. And this is my last one. Um, it's called Regiment. Marching orders, boots, part of squadrons now, precious men conditioned to warrior status, Spartan schedule saps energy reserves, crawling through trenches, tussle with death, not clipping branches, reason for being questioned, drill sergeants, shrilling voice, pops eardrums, Precious men being conditioned to warrior status, body not on hiatus, blessed strength needed from gods to weather extreme habituation, fast friends made in the mix, a common urgency unites adjoined souls, summer solstice increases heat, sweat glands overstimulated, not giving in to strict paradigms, structured, simplistic lifestyle. Precious men 
been conditioned to warrior status, conforming to the quo, emotional, intellectual quotients tested, sup, morning rituals commence, load, fire, reload, fire, dismantle, lay down, trying to sleep with conscience as a buzz, days bleeding into one another, tossing, turning in stiff cot, sand, comfortable pillowcase, might as well rest on hardwood floors, back, languid, mind, listless, precious men, conditioned to warrior status, waiting period, Turbulent treachery afoot, encampment circumvented by enemies, cumulative training kicks in, His blazing eyes darting in every direction, survival mode, modulate, skirmish, sk 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 skittering like bugs, ants ascending the hillside, bottlenecking as they go, Queen Bee expects her suitors to contend at all costs, naked conquest, precious men, conditioned, to warrior status, thrust into unknown gloom. Let's go! Let's go, you guys. I'm using my camera for Douglas G. Kala! Right. Are we seeing Kala or Kayla? Kala, Kala, yeah. All right, Kala. Yeah. All right, so I, yes. All right, unmute your mics, give it up for Douglas Kala tonight. Let's All right. I'm so excited for all these Albuquerque poets that come out and they, they come and find me online. <laughs> 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 because we I, really, I mean, we're doing a lot of big things. Um, but, you know, uh, so much of COVID shut everyone down. <laughs> Albuquerque doesn't really know what we're doing online. Uh, this whole world is, is open. All right, this next person now I've got Nemo Zoom is here like y'all. Nemo and Rich Boucher have a have a double feature in March. It's gonna be so fucking exciting. <laughs> I'm like fat girling in my pants. But like in the best way, uh, because like they make me pee my pants. I'm so excited. Uh, I know it's a little TMI, but this is a brave space. And so if I can say that, then you should be able to just uh, you know say whatever you <laughs> you're welcome, Rich. All right, let's go. All right, uh, Nemo, soon we got you. Shocky G, are you reading tonight? I need to know. Uh, I got you on my list. If you're not reading, then let me know and I'll, uh, we'll, we'll figure something else out. We'll just, we'll bring Sophia up. So Sophia, uh, make sure you're, you're ready. We'll see what happens. Are you ready, Nemo? I am ready. Um, I have a micro triptych and I have a short poem that I just finished. I am a desolate planet, atmosphere long ago blown away, pockmarked with impact craters, harsh, cold, uninhabitable. I used to get angry when the sheets got moved around and balled up in a linen closet, which happened all the time. I would fume and curse under my breath. Now the sheets in my closet don't move unless I move them. And there's no need to fume unless I want to get angry about dust. He has so much potential, they said. If only he would apply himself, but I didn't. Books stayed closed and I played imaginary games in imagined places with imaginary people who made sense because their mothers and fathers loved them. I wish I could say that I defied my parents all along, but there was so much shame, so much doubt, so many times my face burned at their disappointment. Oh, the power of disappointment, of guilt. I learned to fight myself, learned to hate the dreamer, 
who looked out the window instead of working, foreshadowing the day I would stare into the distance, an unmarked test in front of me, penned down, heartbroken, the day after my father left for good. My anonymity became my refuge. Odysseus said it to save his life. When he got home, he killed everyone. I say it to save my dignity. There's no one who calls me son. Someday, somebody, maybe. For now, I am no one. And this is, uh, the poem is uh, called Lost. Lately, I can't find my words. They used to come so easily that I could choose the perfect ones. I got others' words stuck in my head, songs and slogans, their sing-song simplicity stuck on repeat, saying nothing over and over, but my own are missing. The other day, my doctor asked if I felt afraid. I tried to explain that I have an urgent need to not be wrong anymore, that I feel unbearable. But he just nodded, and we moved along. Abandonment runs in my family. My people don't say goodbye. When they leave, and perhaps that's because they don't have the words. So maybe I am afraid. Maybe I don't know what I'll do when the next big wave hits. Maybe I feel like my determination is waning. Maybe I fear that my mind will crack again and what I say will only serve to send me to a place where my words mean nothing. Thank you. Wow. Well done, Nemo. Well, yeah. well done. You guys, unmute your mics for Nemo soon, please. Yeah. And great to hear you again, Nemo, sir. Great to hear you. Thank you. Nemo is part of our sister network at Guerrilla Poets. Uh, Guerrilla Poets is an incredible nonprofit organization out of North Carolina, and they do all kinds of work within their own community, but also online. And uh, Shane Maynard, who is the head of Guerrilla Poets, works a lot with our publishing house and has done quite a bit of the cover art for the books that we've published. So uh, it is just incredible. Nemo does these wonderful workshops. Uh, you, you just got to get involved, right? I mean, I mean, getting involved with Word is Right is getting involved with Guerrilla Poets and Garage Poets and so many other organizations. Uh, we're, we're networked in, we're kind of spider webbed in with each other. So when you go to one, you kind of learn about the other. And it's, uh, it, it's just, it doesn't get better than this. And, and really, we do become like family. Uh, we become a support system for each other. So it's, yeah, thank you so much, Nemo. All right, uh, we got Shaki G uh, coming up. Uh, Shaki is amazing. Uh, Shaki, Star Child, Douglas, I, I know Douglas is going to be part of this uh, next show, uh, does uh, Out Loud, the podcast live show, the first Sunday of every month. Uh, so we've Out Loud, the literary art anthology, which we put out is an incredible book. Um, and uh, so we took the book, uh, the, the um, LGBTQ literary art anthology book, and we turned it into a show, uh, which we're making into a podcast. And we're so, so honored and excited to have Shaki and Starchild and Douglas um, be part of uh, running uh, this uh, this month's show. It's, it's awesome. If anyone is interested in helping out with the show, whether it's the behind the scenes stuff or helping with the show itself on um, during the, the filming, uh, let us know. We would love the help. <laughs> and if you're interested in being on the show, um, that we would love that as well. All right, let's go. And then she's also got her show starting, uh, her regular show, the second Friday night of every month, but she has a very special Black History Month show uh, coming here uh, soon. So I'll let her kind of plug all of that. You ready, Shaki? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready. Can you hear me? Yes, we got you. 
Okay. Um, and and uh, po award-winning poet Sophia Falco um, is also going to be on the Outload show as well. <clears throat> the first one, I'm going to do three pieces today. The first one is called Sing. Uh, it was after, uh, after hearing Jane's, uh, I'm going to read this one. Silence is never the option. Silence is the baton. It's the knee on the neck. It's 60 rounds for one body like a standing ovation. Silence is screaming all lives matter while black skin paves the streets. I have been silent for too long. Felt the screaming in my chest, heart pounding on cages looking to be set free. They taught me that silence was golden. Forgot to mention it too was mined from our throats like diamonds. Plucked from hands no longer fixed to a body. Threw our silence across a field. Watch it bloom into tolerance, flowering acceptance. We can be silent no more. Who will sing songs of freedom? Surely it will be the ones who also cried tears of revolution, screamed change at the top of their lungs, whispered, we shall overcome into the wind. But silence is never the option. All right, I'm just randomly picking uh, other ones. This one's called Charles Darwin. I've been told that after years of struggle, we all learn to adapt, call it survival of the physicist, call it evolution, say at some point, nature should give humans the ability to molt, shed our skin when living in it feels too much, when history carves its way into every wrinkle, leaves its baggage under wary eyes, my skin, melanated. They say black don't crack, but black also don't chameleon its way into the background, hasn't quite thickened itself into Kevlar, has become a canvas for scars, tattoos, and bullet wounds, this skin. A badge of honor, tapestry of purple hearts, a rehab facility for generational trauma. I imagine one day this skin will be more than an uneasy conversation, an excuse, a cocoa butter laced apology. Know that I have learned to be comfortable in this skin. The way we pretend turtlenecks are comfortable around our necks. And maybe that too is adapting, some form of survival. Evolution is funny that way. Okay, and the last one. is called Black Mirror. My friends and I are terrible at being friends. We still send each other Rick rolls and laugh, send way too many TikToks about our lives. We tell each other we are family. But outside our phones, we are lonely islands, hurricane beating flooded streets. We are a forgotten beauty, indigenous tribes. Pretend our phones are bridges more connected while falling apart. I stare at my phone and only see a reflection of my darkness. My thumbs shouting manifest destiny like we swipe is conquering a new world. We are not tropical vacation spots. We are crime ridden slums pretending to be something else. We define our friendship by Wi-Fi connection like our hearts are hot spots. We be drained battery, cracked glass, dirty phone case how we box ourselves into these nine inch frames. To the untrained eye, we are the definition of friendship. Beyond this black mirror, we are strangers struggling to find connection and losing signal. Damn, let's go Shaki. Let's go Shaki. Do you, do you have another short one you wanna do? Um, no, I don't know. <laughs> All right, you guys, unmute your mics. Give it up for Shocky G, the poet. Nice opening a line on that one, especially Shocky. Ooh, Shocky. Yeah. She recently won the Button Poetry Video wow. Competition. Uh, is amazing. We just love her so much. And we're really honored that she's part of Word is Right. And uh, we got to get to Philadelphia. Wait, I don't know if she's in Philly or Pittsburgh. They're on opposite sides of the state, but we've got to get to PA for sure. All right, let's go. Uh, so you can find Shockey, of course, this coming Sunday. Shit, is it this Sunday? No, it's not. It's next Sunday. 
a week from tomorrow because tomorrow's the 29th i can count uh, i got my shit together a little like a little a week from tomorrow is uh, out loud the podcast live show uh, don't miss it is right here the word is right on zoom uh, you'll have to go to the word is right facebook page or instagram and see the links there if you would like to get on the email list uh, let me know send me your email and uh, we'll do that shaki shaki do you want to plug what your your special black history month show coming up here in february uh, yeah, I put it in the, the chat, but on February 10th, um, I've got AJ Houston and uh, Zakali Zamconto um, are going to be featuring. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting off in a little bit. Hang, hang on, hang on one sec, Shaki. Oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, they'll be featuring, um, and I it's also an open mic, so I, I hope you guys uh, come through for that. Um, and I put all the, the other stuff in the chat. Uh, my features and things like that. Awesome. I know Zamconto has asked for uh, to, to come and be uh, have a host slot here. So I'm hoping that he gets me um, an idea for a show and like what his availability is. I know he's had he's struggled a lot with um, connectivity. So uh, if he can get that result, I would love to have him have a permanent slot here at Word is Right also. I think he's just, he's such a light. His energy is is vivacious and um, he's um, very beloved in our community. And AJ Houston, for those who don't know who he is, uh, he is a, a, a staple in the poetry world. Uh, he has published, I think now his eighth or ninth book. Uh, and it, it, he, his, his book needs to be mandatory reading for everyone like 12 and older, uh, all of it. Like I think, I think at 12 kids can handle the truth and his books are uh, history books. So if you've not had a chance to find him, please do so. Yes. All right. So PoetCon, I was wondering about that baby girl. All right. So PoetCon will, will lead us off when we come back. Uh, so if you're going to be here, Con, I got you. Um, when uh, when when we wrap up with Sophia, we'll lead with you. Okay, so Poet Con, don't go anywhere. We'll lead with you after Sophia's feature. So, so Poet Sophia Falcon. <laughs> I love her, right? So I have to say you have to use all three words. You don't have to use all three words, but I say you have to use all three words. Um, she's just um, a joy to know and a joy to get to learn from. And I love reading her books, her latest book. And no, this is not a book I published. I, I love promoting everyone, okay? Um, um, Chronicles of Cosmic Chaos in the Fourth Dimension uh, by Poet Sophia Falco. It is just an incredible book. I've only had a chance to kind of flip through it and skim through a couple poems because I just got it yesterday. Uh, but it is a love is a lovely book. It's nice and thick. It's full of incredible things. So please, please, please support these poets and their books, uh, if anything. All right, here we go. Sophia Falco's third poetry book, Chronicles of Cosmic Chaos in the Fourth Dimension, has been published by Uncollected Press in early December 2022. In addition, she is the author of Farewell Clave Dove and of her award-winning chapbook, The Immortal Sunflower. Falco is the winner of the Maribali Prize for Poetry, and she graduated magnum cum laude along with the highest honors in the literature department from the University of California, Santa Cruz. Her Bachelor of Arts degree is in intensive literature with a creative writing concentration in poetry. Furthermore, she has over 40 individual poems published in various literary journals, magazines, and anthologies, including Out Loud by Red or Green Books. Now Sophia is in a highly regarded Master of Fine Arts program for poetry, along with carrying out a teaching fellowship. She is on her way to make her dream career becoming a reality to be a professor of poetry. Finally, she takes pride in being a dedicated volunteer blogger for the International Bipolar Foundation since April 2020 as a devoted mental health advocate for life. You can find her on Instagram, Poet Sophia Falco one the number, not the spell it out. Unmute your mics, give it up for Poet Sophia Falco! Woo! Woo! Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity. Um, I just wrote a few notes down before we get started, uh, sort of along the lines of what Marissa was talking about. So I wanna appreciate the opportunity here and I wanna make an acknowledgement that there has been too many tragedies across our country. 
Um, and I want to reiterate that your lives matter. Um, and this is a shift towards what I'll be reading today as a preview. Um, so a little about myself and my work. So I did think about ending my life, but something made me hold on. And as a mental health advocate, um, I openly live with bipolar disorder one and PTSD on the way uh, to pave that we can do this with the right care, support and treatment. And um, poetry has been integral to this and a lifesaver. Um, and with a heavy heart, yet now it's time to turn towards poetry to ignite change first within ourselves, then radiate outwards and our words count. So uh, please remember that. Um, and I'm gonna be reading some poems from my uh, third book, Chronicles of Cosmic Chaos in the Fourth Dimension published by Uncollected Press. I have some sticky notes on my book and we'll just see what, what flows today. Um, so the first one I wanna start out with um, is gonna be published by Strangers and Karma coming up. So I'm excited uh, about that. Um, neighborhood Buddhist with Alzheimer's. Not from the heavens, but a sign from above. I spotted him sitting on a wooden bench at the park after reading the Buddhist on death row as he watched on my basketball taking flight with my right hand to shoot my left as a guide on a hot street completing around the world. I felt I was walking on the moon or walking on the sun, wishing for him to be the light to guide me, since still my crossover, unable to fake out the demons lurking, confided my secrets with hoop. I jinxed myself, asked the question. He replied, never heard of it. Then started staring at my basketball, once bright color like the setting sun, fading away like my spirit now, the grip worn down, no longer can grasp without slipping out of my hands. Therefore, this is not always the teaching of impermanence. He whose name started with H or J, depending on who was addressing him, gave me a choice, invited me to his secret garden, poured soda in a glass with perhaps less soda than ice. Once they told me smash ice cubes or hold on to them, I knew this would melt, becoming water, slipping through the spaces between my fingers, pondering the problems of the world with a grin with a stranger. I called him a week later and he could no longer remember my name. Thank you, that's poem one. This is titled Spider Legs after Tommy Orange. I would pluck the daddy long legs from the peeling yellow painted walls, placing them in my dollhouse. Out of rubber bands bedazzled with glitter, I created tiny leashes. Every morning for 223 days, I walk my spiders down the miniature flight of stairs, eventually taping them down before their escape. Spiders want me specifically in this two-story house. Biting my legs at night became infected with pus coming out the four red circles. No one else afflicted a trap in a home. Spider silk can be broken by the wind. Grief consumes my body. These bites treated painless, not my psyche, to embark for the journey of acceptance. This staircase does not lead me towards the light. Instead, into the dark basement covered in cobwebs, the answer lies in a web. A tree is not the right metaphor. I must now free myself from the silky strands that are shielding my eyes from being wide open. Thank you. <laughs> the first time. The first time the world was fake, merely a blue green marble that started to crack. The lines ran too deep the same day it rolled off the kitchen table after the argument that this marble is more than just a marble, also a representation of the ocean and the continents, but his back stood as he blocked the doorway, just two colors. 
I became as small as the marble as the four walls started to close in on me, shrinking as I buried my face in the hands that were no longer mine, alone in my bedroom, feeling like the only human in the world. It just feels as if you're dying. Take the medication and go to bed. I complied after hanging up the phone, after having yelled, I'm dying in a safe town, then judging myself by myself. Wondering the lasting mental image of the blue green marble. It was just a marble the first time I saw it. I'm just a human when I look in the mirror. They say there's still the potential for it to be a marble once again to create a new narrative, yet, or once again to create a mosaic, a new narrative. Yet I know never the same. The shards, I'm still reaching for the missing glue unequipped to be the savior of this world, fearing the arrival of the second time. Thank you. Let's see what else in here. <laughs> um, okay, this was a late addition <clears throat> to my book, but I find it very important. Um, um, this poem is titled Spectator. Um, the era of simplicity no longer stands as I am in the stands, merely a spectator watching myself dressed and undressed, trying to decipher in the mirror if I somewhat resemble a man wearing my flannel deemed lumberjack shirt as a joke as a power move, but owning no dresses. And as I dress myself, I think maybe my face yet, I don't want to admit confusion, but when my gender gets questioned, the dominoes fall, the past falls backwards, not spring forwards, never feminine enough, yet feeling powerless. I would rather have the power a man does, but would never want to be one while women are so beautiful, their breasts wishing to, consensually touch another woman's breast, whereas my chest holds fear too. My lungs, less air as anxiety rises. I dislike mirror. I hate seeing myself in photographs. And as I stand there, there is more than the physical, the distance upon distance, guarded upon guarded. The shield was too fierce. It cracked under its own weight. This body feels too heavy. While this mind is trying to withstand the test of time or the wall, there's a mirror. Mirrors are man-made, and I didn't make it a point to ponder the binaries, the blurring, the defining, the undefining when all I want is to embody a woman and be with a woman, saluting and unsaluting. The mirror, check yourself before you wreck yourself, a man would say, versus the lemon test. However, the test lies before my very own eyes. Thank you. A few more. Um, this one's titled, Timely or Timeless. Having written countless poems, knowing the truth that they're actually good or bad poems, despite the smile, there is a difference. And no matter my efforts, I cannot hold my hand throughout the night. Instead, I wish I could hide them from myself. But at the same time, I do have two hands blessed to write these words while they speak of beautiful angels. No, I see angels without wings that the demons ate and subsequently them wounded. They are free falling like me into an abyss, feeling worthless, still trying to believe in purpose, just wanting to reach okay, not even the sublime this time. The creature with four legs who used to look at me with sparkling eyes, knowing when mine were heavy and full of sorrow, she is nowhere near. And there is nowhere to release my tears. The years are catching up to me. I was caught in a gigantic spider web full of thorns, cutting my skin, and I cannot cut out the suffering from my life. Removed wishing that the eraser broke the pencil a stub. No more words left to be born are liberated, and the thing I believe in the most is not working. Nothing is working. I close my eyes at night, still see the sun, blinded by the same rhyme, same mantras. This too shall pass. No and no. 
I refute again no. More than a decade later, counting down the minutes, counting down the seconds, sick of meds not working yet, sick of the broken compass, sick of the needle, sick of faltering the fault in our stars, they say. And well, I say, I'm a shooting star and there is no handbook on how to revive a shooting star. Thank you. This poem's um, titled um, Love Poem with Purple Pens and Bleeding Hearts of Ink Dripping after Stephanie Burt's This is for Maya, poem dedicated to Maya. I always text purple heart emojis, not red ones, afraid of love, even though this is composed of blue and red, so stemming from the same source, gravity towards but against war yet, feeling wounded, my closest friends notice under purple heart, an act of bravery, of boldness, of beholding, and of being recognized for the struggle, whereas my mother figure sends me red hearts while I send her my art. But I, still feeling undeserving and wonder why she cares so much, wrote my poems dedicated to her in purple ink, high quality gel pen as to not bleed through the page in this world full of hurt, red reminiscent of blood, and I cannot send a red heart to this day. But hopefully soon I will be first able to like myself, then love myself. Then I will feel deserving of a love poem. <laughs> Thank you. I have a little more time. Um, this one's titled Knowledge for Vincent Van Gogh. Those depression, okay, Knowledge for Vincent Van Gogh. Those sunflowers knew his depression even more than he knew the back of his own hands that painted them. He was probably trying to morph hope from his fraught spirit into the tangible form, 11 paintings, they knew. I know they were gently weeping when defaced by protesters as his own hand once protested against his own being that he cut off his own ear and the stars were a witness for that matter, dark matter. Those depressions, he didn't survive. Well, I have made it. I don't have survivor's guilt or maybe I do. And just don't mess around with his paintings. Someone once asked me at a poetry reading, are you a painter? No, I paint with words, but now treading cautiously on these approaching syllables to be born, writing slower as the sadness becomes more real. If I could ask him just one question, it would be, where is your safe place? Thank you. I think I'll do two more poems um, to close this out. Um, they go together. Um, poetry is my prayer. I was the one who got away from myself, running and running, worn down countless pairs of running shoes, all colors over the years. If lined up, this would create a rainbow, running from the rainbow too, even though somewhere over the rainbow rang true in childhood, running myself into the ground, self-hatred deemed the self as weakling, stomach down, head to the side on the red brick patio with the sun, beating down on my back, beads of sweat dripping down. Well, she'd rather want me to wear necklaces of pretty beads, but not the rainbow, no. And that day, all alone, the weight of the world, too much to hold up the sky, trying not to die if I wasn't a poet. I dare not want to think of what would have happened to me. Cannot be a self-fulfilling prophecy. My moral duty to live, to survive, not up to being another poet who falls falls off the face of the planet, expectations. I don't have the answers or a beacon of light. It's been bleak on and off like the lighthouse flashing lights for over a decade, feeling weak, 
weeks keep going by, people deem me inspirational, whereas I'm sometimes scared of these hands that can also work magic. A double-edged sword, my purple pen is no sword. A sword is not a pen. And this leads me back to when... Thank you. And to close this off, um, the final poem for this evening, um, birthday blues. Uh, birthday blues, I hear you, wishing to fight for you to see the we in welding. I wish to weld you a shield of any type, tangible or intangible. We need each other, not just alone, individual with that magnificent shining sword. I have fallen for you. I wish to gift you an endless ladder to climb out from this place, head space, this strife, this life to the top of the world. Yet the world is like a sphere, but still not quite. The universal language you speak of perhaps is the ocean, the water, yet to some, the desert, the sand dunes. To me, universality is seeing past someone's facade into their heart space, their essence, their art, another trip around the sun. And I'm blessed to have met you. Wish I could be dazzle your spirit with glitter to let your spirit shine. Let your spirit breathe deeply. Let the rainbow prevail instead of sorrow raining down your cheek like sweat dripping like the wax of a dying candle, the light and dark and dark and light, those shadows, birthday blues, I hear you, nowhere near in your shoes. Yes, we do need that ladder to reach for the stars, yet your eyes, when they twinkle with that shine for poetry, they are stars to me. Thank you so much for this opportunity. <laughs> You guys on mute your mics, give it up for poet Sophia Falco. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I'm so excited, right? If we, if we had the hat we were passing around, right? If we're a cafe or a brewery or, or in, a, in a, any sort of um, coffee shop, we would have the hat that would be going around. And we would ask the folks put a couple bucks in the in the hat, right? There, there's quite a bit. There's 20, 20 people in the room right now. It, that's a lot of people. If everyone put two or three or four dollars into the hat uh, for these features, it would be an incredible uh, tip for them. Uh, Sophia's. Let me pull it up. Um, oh, Sophia, your cash handles are not on here. What's your cash at people? Uh, it's PayPal is at Sophia Falco. Yeah. And that's PayPal? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so at Sophia Falco is her PayPal. If you do not have PayPal, you have Cash App or Venmo or something else, let us know. You can always send us uh, a Cash App and then we can forward on the tips to our featured readers. Uh, there really is no reason why we can't get tips to someone. If you're hardcore, like cash only, uh, you can send me cash and I will send it to them. We have had people do that in the past where they either write a check or they'll do a send us a money order and we'll forward that on to the poets there really is zero reason why we cannot get features tipped uh tonight and and word is right does not take any amount of that so i want to make that clear like when when you tip the host it is just it goes to the host like it is none of it comes to word is right you know we're we're really blessed in the sense that we have a large team and we're able to uh keep the keep the roof over our heads <laughs> so to speak so please uh send her something just don't do nothing Right, we get overwhelmed. Oh my God, we have to do a lot of, we have to do a lot every time. No, you don't. Uh, but if you do a little every time, it makes a big difference. And that's what we're asking for tonight. If everyone who's here would just buy her a gallon of gas, buy her a cup of coffee, go do something. Uh, better yet, go buy her book. Uh, don't just buy one, buy two, buy two copies because you're going to love it so much. You're going to want to give this to your friend, your family member, your coworker, uh, some random person on the street. Everyone should have a copy of these women's books. Uh, anyone could read them. It is literature for any adult, uh, truly. Uh, it, they're just sensational, sensational books. So please, please, please just don't 
do nothing. If you do not have PayPal, you can send me Cash App uh, and I will forward that on. So message us. If you're watching this live back uh, or you're watching this on YouTube uh, at a later date and you're interested in helping tip our features, just reach out to us that the word is right and we will uh, we will go ahead and, and, and get that. The word is right, 505 at gmail.com is our email uh, or anywhere on Facebook, Instagram. And we'll be glad to uh, glad to connect to you and uh, get those tips passed on for you. All right, we're going to rock and roll it on this open mic uh, tonight. We got uh, quite a bit of more posts to go, so don't go anywhere. <laughs> the show's not stopping. Like this, the shit is going down. We have an incredible lineup to finish the open mic. And thank you so much, everyone who is staying uh, to support the the open mic tonight. We have Poetcon Ross. Fire is in the house, y'all. Yeah, original ten in the building. She's gonna lead us off uh, as we pick up the open mic, followed by Poetastic, Star Child, Marianne Peterson, Terry Rose Durson, and Rich Boucher is gonna close us out tonight, which I couldn't be more excited about because he's amazing. So, all right, Pocon, you have the floor, my beautiful friend. Thank you. Um, one time. <laughs> that is my poet, <laughs> along with a, a bunch of other poets. Um, so amazing features tonight. It's so cool to be in the word is right one time. And um, so this is a piece. Um, uh, this is called The Suffering. This is dedicated to um, Tyree Nichols' mother. Hold on a second. Let me close my door. Yep. So I'm going to no interruptions. All right. Y'all be quiet for a sec. Okay. I prayed today. Began with Father God, I'm coming back to the heart of worship and it's all about you, Jesus. Who is Jesus? The leader of the struggling, I ask for the ability to forgive you, Jesus, because today another black mother cries and this time it was at the hands of an oppressor drenched in melanin. How? Sorry. Let me bring that back. Sorry, my baby switches. All right, one more time. I prayed today, began with Father God. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you, Jesus. Who is Jesus? <laughs> the leader of the struggling. I ask for the ability to forgive you, Jesus, because today another Black mother cries, and this time it is at the hands of an oppressor drenched in melanin. How? For it means to what end, why must another mother cry at the hands of us? Five on one, one was not enough. Beat him brutally. Video footage of a mother saying he is actually a good boy. My frail, pale heart implodes. No one knows the day or time hatred will attack. I want to grab all the black men, kiss them, keep them hidden away. All the women on the frontier, we got bullets for days, but who are we shooting? us. Today, we kill us, for us, by us. I literally feel physical ailments. My jaw prowls the floor in silence. I know she prayed for him. Just like Mary prayed for Jesus, and maybe the good ones get taken from a world that does not want us. Not even us want us. We, the suffering, I held my son tight today, tighter, just for a few seconds longer, told him a black man died today. 
some black policeman killed him. He says, mom, let's talk about it after park time. Scared to go to the park, scared to breathe. It's becoming something I have to focus forward. What were five men thinking? Five black men thinking. He was probably a fourth of their age. Our black boys deserve to grow old. Jesus did not grow old. He died for the suffering. I want to take all the black men, hide them in a safe, leave them in a place safe, left in a dark cave, stunt my son's growth. He is slightly taller than me now. <laughs> I have to give him to the world like Mary did Jesus, saw her precious on a cross. Thank you for suffering, Jesus. But you chose to suffer. You came to suffer. We did not. Our black boys were birthed from poverty, lust and love with a history full of profound struggle. They had no idea of the coming in a world that sold them Disneyland as promised land, a world that said they could be all they wanted to be. The American dream is a black man's nightmare. For a black man riding his skateboard, listening to Childish Gambino, the twinkle in his mother's eye, he screamed for her. How can anyone witness a plea for repentance from a crime not committed, screams for his mother in his final sentence, still render violence for penance? Mima is disgusted with you, all five of you. Her sagging titties in her house coat were so you could grow to be the goat, possibly. So you could be your ancestor's pride, you sorry, tick on a hairless cat, dog with no bark, lion with no jungle to rule. Somebody called you Massa's boy. A sly smile, the deceitful mind. You turned on your own kind, kicked him in the head three times. I hope the ancestors haunt your every dream. I pray you wake up to MLK standing over you, bloody and undefeated spirit, mutilated. I hope defaming our ancestors, the boats, the lynchings, the picnics at auction blocks, the busted lips, eyes, broken noses, the 12 year olds assholes ripped to keep America appeased. Leave my sons alone, America. Please. Thank y'all. Thank you. I'm a, I'm a mother of two black boys. I'm a single mom, you know? So thank y'all. Thank y'all for just bearing this truth with me. I really appreciate it. There's not a day that goes by that I don't worry about your boys. Like your boys are the best, Erica. And they are so sweet. They are so sweet and they're full of promise and hope and innocence and joy and all of the things that you want this world to be. Her, her sons are, they're everything that we're afraid we're gonna lose. 
And I can't imagine what it is like to be raising black men in America today. But God damn it, like, I know what it's like to be worried about your kids making it home, but fuck it. Like, I feel that, I feel that peace. If y'all are not angry, if y'all are not moved by that poem, by that mother watching that video of her son being killed, like uh, two houses down from their home, like, what are we doing, America? What are we doing? And if the, if the poets don't bring it to the surface, if the poets don't talk about it, it's never going to get said. I'm so uh, sorry because I love you and I don't want you to be scared and I, there's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do to take that away from you. Uh, it's a completely senseless and hopeless feeling I have because my friends are raising black boys in America and they're the sweetest boys you will ever meet in your life. And I'm just so angry. I'm so angry that this happened. And I'm so angry it continues to happen. And it's been happening my whole life, my whole life. And I'm 42 years old and it's been happening. I mean, it's been happening, I know, for, for the last 300 years. But uh, I just, I, I don't know how to keep going uh, with all the senseless violence. So it needs to stop. We have to figure a way. I, I, we have to figure a solution to this. Um, thank you, Erica, for that poem. I love you and your boys so much. Uh, yeah. Let's keep reading that piece. Fucking A, let's keep reading that piece. All right, we're gonna move on. Uh, Potastic, you're up next, uh, followed by Star Child. That was a very deep piece, to say the least. I uh, hope the I hope he finds peace. All right, my name is Ed Potastico. I feel fantastic. Please give me time to enjoy my rock, Bob the Sublime. I got two pieces, so no, I won't take too much time. My first piece is called Grieving Gun. Bull with a name, a foggy mind, common sense tossed in flames, innocence corpses left behind. A pool of crimson, a flood of emotions, a frigid hungry gun, names tossed in the ocean, a crying monster, a trail of blood, remorse from a butcher, stings from a billion suns, empty flaming hearts, a river of tears, guilt shooting darts, the signs are here, a collage of faces, time stands still, dark empty spaces, dead inhumane chills, screams of justice, Silence of deaf ears, ignorance is bliss, sadness draws near. Memories in twilight, words left unsaid, darkness is darkness in hindsight, regrets left dead. Tears in the streets, loved ones with angels, bodies covered in concrete, feet full of anvils, lives taken away, coffins become full, days of decay, one bloodthirsty fool. Funerals on display, ceremonies in black, Mean emotional heart attacks, crying hearts crack. Clouds of gray, downpour of rain, echoes of disarray, colors of pain. Flowers on altars, many greeting families, legends of slaughter, many deep sympathies. Thank you. I uh, got a spicy piece to say the least. This is called Blooming Sex Bomb. <clears throat> I remember your soft, silky figure. You had the wind of strawberries. My trigger has gotten much bigger. My desire was often the varies. I had a burning lust to feed. I had a desire to ignite our needs. I had an unquenchable hunger to dance and breed. The naughty senses couldn't subside or take heed. I want to taste my tongue on your tongue. Let our whispers and moans flow into the air. Let the burning passion sizzle our lungs. 
Come on, let's dance till we're both exposed and bare. You are in those soft legs while delay. Your pink softness was so, was so inviting. I did some oral repetitive wordplay. Your actions were blazing, intoxicating, and exciting. You could crack stone with your moans. You know how to keep up a tune. I'm sizzling your sweet skin and pale bones. You both howled at the Milky Moon. You dropped and drop when you go on top. Your soft pink walls caress my thing. I don't want my cherry bomb to stop. You listen to our high pitched vocals sing. Our loins cried while our lungs expand. Our red sensational river overflowed. Time changed the sand. I couldn't forget how your, blue, your beauty glowed. The open spaces are quickly sealed. Our hearts are overflowing with desire. The bare moments we couldn't reveal. Our crimson blood was pulsing with, with fire. I was absorbed by the deep black abyss. I was pushing underneath the pink mode. I could resist the pink mist. You were wild, untamed, and uncontrolled. We had short breaths going through our lips. Your, mo your movements started matching mine. I felt the sensation for our nips and fingertips. We felt the we felt the synchronized embers up our steins. Our bodies were lost in a blazing domain. It was chest to chest, colliding head on. The rapid strain we had to maintain inside our brains. We grew all night long and strong. We cried one bit musical note of satisfaction. It seems our the end of our lustful train reaction. We were we were exhausted, but we didn't frown. The light creeped into the shadows. Our heads were hidden underneath the sheets. The dear darkness slowly closes. The sunlight kisses our feet. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, I'm so glad you're here. Poetastic, you make us feel fantastic. Yes. Uh, let's go. Woo. Thank you. Woo. <laughs> and uh, actually, Miss Zany, who's uh, staying with me this week, uh, she's going to pop into the room and we're going to add her to the list as well. Uh, but I'm going to have her go before Rich so Rich can still close the show because I think the show will be best closed by his words. Uh, so yeah, it'll be wonderful. All right, uh, Star Child. So we got Star Child and then Marianne. All right, I got two. And the first one, I just want to offer a little bit, a little bit of context. In the book of Revelation, the Lamb of God is the one who is worthy to open the scroll of heaven. And what I want to say is that in our world today, the Lamb of God is the black man. I've seen the lambs kicking a ball that barely holds air in the dusty streets of Gaza. I've seen them battling on concrete courts with steel net rims in Chicago. They never stop living in danger and they see death happen every week, so they try their best to stay loyal to their family and friends, which white people call gangs, which they attack with the same fury they apply to wildflowers invading their lawns. But among the lambs, the son of man will make his return because they can't be controlled by empire. And they have no investment in the diabolical market that never stops colonizing everything God has ever tried to love. The lambs are worthy to break the seals and open the scroll of heaven, not because they are without sin, but because they are ready to burn the old world down so a new world can be born where lambs rule instead of markets and empires. The second one is called Becoming God. And it's the title poem for my book. Becoming God happens when we get our elbows and knees just right for snuggling, except that it's billions of bodies and nobody has deodorant and everyone is farting with growling tummies. We find our bones starting to slide into alignment so that we tickle and rub together with no less innocence than a meadow of flowers. And we stop saying mine about anything since all of it really can be all of ours. When all our bodies fit like a jigsaw puzzle and no one remains outside the circle, when our eyes turn into mirrors of smiles that ripple like sunbeams dancing over the sea, when earth is not different than our skin and we stop building a world without dirt, when we no longer try to steal land or climb to the top or out hustle everyone else, when glory is all that we see in our field of vision and we trust its magic, 
when we hold hands every time we pray and make sure no one falls asleep without kisses, then we will be God. Not because we can do anything on our own, but because God is the giant cuddle pile that never stops drawing bodies into its warmth, just like the protozoans who worked patiently over billions of years to cuddle their way into human bodies. One day, we will be galaxies glowing in perfect belonging, and hell will finally be empty. Let's go. Let's go, Star Child, y'all. Unmute your mics. Give it up for Star Child. Oh, I'm so excited that Star Child and uh, Shockey and Douglas are going to be leading, and, and Sophia are going to be uh, heading uh, the Out Loud podcast live uh, this um, next Sunday, a week from tomorrow. So I was so excited. Uh, if anyone is interested in helping out with Out Loud, the podcast live, um, being a panelist or being part of the discussion, uh, hit them up, hit us up. We'd be glad to uh, bring you on and, and help that show continue to thrive to talk about queer and LGBTQ plus issues uh, that are affecting all of us. Um, at least all of us who, who are who are in the community. So let's go. All right. Um, I got Marianne. Now, uh, Ms. Zaney is uh, standing in my kitchen, actually, like, right now. She's she's in my kitchen. <laughs> she she's in my kitchen right now as we speak. Uh, so she's gonna she's gonna come up to the uh, to the mic and do a poem. Um, but we're gonna go style trial, Marianne, Terry Rose. And then I'll bring Miss Amy up to read, and then we'll have Rich close us out. So, oh, sorry, child, just read. I'm, I didn't check that whole thing yet. All right, so Marianne, and then Terry Rose, and then we'll have Miss Amy bring. Uh, we'll bring her up, and then we'll have Rich close us out. So, are you ready, Marianne? Yeah. Hey, I guess I'll do three. Mega poem and two shorter poems. This one is called My Heart Was Broken. I wrote on the 26th of this month. My heart was broken many times in many ways. My heart was broken when I was bullied. My heart was broken when I was a victim of domestic violence. My heart was broken when I was sexually assaulted more than once. My heart was broken when people I cared about died. My heart was broken when I had to move away from my family and friends. My heart was broken when my past pets died. My heart was broken into many pieces. My heart is mending now little by little. That's the first one. Second one I'll do is one of two that I did uh, for a writing prompt to, to the last draw. This is the first one I uh, did uh, for it. It's called Good to the Last Draw. I wrote it on the 25th of this month. I spread your pussy lips wide. I put all my fingers inside. I move them back and forth faster and faster. You start moaning. You come. I take my fingers out gently. I let you come off of my fingers. You are good to the last draw. This is the second one. The last one is my micropoem. This is one I retitled My Love 2, because in one of my past books, I had one called My Love. So I retitled this to My Love 2. I wrote this on the 26th of this month, and it's also to the last to drop a writing prompt. My love is forever. My love is good to the last drop. My love is true. My love is real. My love is all for you. That's it for that. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh my God. Marianne Peters, did we call her a straight out chaser? As a matter of fact, she's the fucking best opening lines of every poet I know. Um, she has, you have you have nine books out now, Marianne? Eight. Eight, eight books. I'm working she's got on eight my books out. Like, y'all, like, she says all the shit we think that we don't say. <laughs> Even you seasoned poets out there don't. <laughs> She says it like it. I love it. She she just comes with it. Let's fucking go. If you're not following her, please do so. Uh, Marianne Peterson Instagram. Um, you have anything coming up, Marianne? Uh, not at the moment, but I am uh, waiting on hearing uh, from a uh, William Washington from one on poetry uh, for another feature again uh, for him. Awesome. He yeah, said well, he'll get back at you within two weeks. He's amazing. I got to meet him in New York City. So yeah, I, yeah. I just 
William Washington. All right, hopefully you get that feature. That would be amazing. Uh, yep. Let us know, we'll come support you. All right, next up we got uh, Terry Rose Jertson, part of the Fierce 15, the poets who we published in 2022. Her book, Chameleon Chronicles, Words Never Spoken is uh, phenomenal. It is full of photographs as well as blackout poetry, whiteout poetry. It is super sassy and it really is a book for everyone. Uh, I love it. I love uh, the tawdry temper of the book. It is just lovely. And then after Terry Rose, we'll have Ms. Zaney and then we'll have Rich uh, round us out this evening. This is the book. But I wrote, um, I wrote some pieces on some of the current events that have been happening that I'm really not too happy about along with everybody else. So this one is about uh, freeing um, Armida Abbasi. Armida Abbasi, political prisoner who was being tortured for her wanting nothing more than human rights for Iranian women. In Iran, the punishment for women who are advocates for change is beatings, persecution, rape, and imprisonment. A mock trial is scheduled in three days with a lawyer who was chosen by the corrupt Iranian government with a predictable and paid for inevitable verdict of death. What else can they do with women who attempt to influence other women to stand up for themselves against this affliction? They will be forced to acknowledge that women deserve to be treated as humans, not the property of anyone and deserve respect. Hey, Iranian patriarchy, how can you be so blind as to not admit that you would not be here if it were not for your mother's blessed, or in your case, cursed womb, wake up, repent all the deaths you have caused, and free Armida Abbasi. And in my stories, I wrote something else about the latest murder. Can get to it. Let me get back to it. Okay. This is about the latest murder. When will the senseless violence stop? When will mothers finally be able to end the murder of their children? When is enough enough? Stop police brutality. And I've been like just so pissed off today. <laughs> okay, here's one, a recent one I wrote too. This is about uh, Lost in the Pink. Lost in Pink. I owned this to death growing up. Overkill resembles chalky, minty, thick substance coating, turning my stomach. Designed my color, still fighting against the injustice of being lost in the pink. And I don't know anything else. I have a lot of short ones. I have this one that I wanted to read if I can get to it. Sorry. Oh, man. Glimmer of beauty and goddess, energy rest inside my identity like a precious gift. Wrapping paper, fragile, not yet ripped open. Christine packaging crowned with jewels, sparkling. You were the one I bestowed myself upon, however undeserving, a faded memory a trick my mind played on itself. Legendary loyalty. I don't want to read that one, never mind. Here's one about tears. Trying to hold them back is the most difficult thing to do. Every time the floodgates open, always accompanied by the faucet running nose, regurgitated bottomless emotions, sadly never knowing what will trigger tears. Thank you. Yes, let's go. 
never knowing what will trigger tears y'all unmute your mics give it up for terry rose jertson Whew. good to hear you terry mm -hmm. yes terry rose's Thank book you. is available it is an incredible book please please get it uh it is at red or green books.com or you can hit me up for it or hit terry rose up for it and she'll sign it for you all right uh we got miss zany in the house like literally we got her in my house <laughs> So I'm going to let her come sit in my seat and she's going to share it with you, whatever she's going to share with you. All right. Like, I'm wondering, like, uh, <laughs> I'm wondering if, like, YouTube does this thing where, well, you're good. I mean, they'll okay. still see you over That's here. Right. Hi, you guys. Oh, my goodness. I'm here. All righty. So um, uh, before I read uh, one of my lovely poems from Touching Tongues, and I see a number of you in here that's featured in here. Um, there's two haiku that I would like to read. All righty. <clears throat> Celibacy is tough. Yet when no connection is present, sucks more. <laughs> I just came up with that one not even like five minutes ago. Uh, yeah, this one was inspired by an Instagram post that I saw earlier today. Um, here that is. Why would women lie when orgasms are released straight from their own heart? <laughs> All right. And with that, I'm going to dive and uh, to... Uh, um, one of the three pieces that I have contributed um, with this book. Um, and it's called, Let Me Hear You. <clears throat> if I can't hear you, don't be surprised when I come to a complete stop. There will be no lips to meet and greet the tip for you to sink into any of my holes before you even consider thrusting as deep as you can go. No tongue swirling up and down the shaft, no holding my head down to the base, fucking my face, making me gag. No taking me from behind in doggy position, nor me riding cowgirl, bucking my hips in addition. In order for me, in order to enjoy what is in front of you, why not let the joy flow through? You may be hard, but which is harder? Your ego are letting go of it. Let me hear you moan, groan, grunt, or even scream, if that's your thing. But first, I want to hear you beg for me. Thank you guys. Um, I'm Ms. Zaney. You can find me at MsZaney.presents on both Facebook and Instagram. I have been mainly writing haiku. <laughs> um, so stay tuned. <laughs> oh my God, Ms. Zaney from 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 my from my computer chair. Yes, Ms. Zaney. Let's go. Uh, she'll be here all week, uh, Albuquerque Poets, if we want to do anything to uh, do an open mic or whatever. Let's go uh, while she's here. It'll be so much fun. All right. So to finish us up uh, tonight is uh, one of my favorite Albuquerque Poets, which we share is in the building. And anytime he comes through is, is just wonderful. And he and Nemo Soom are going to be featuring the last Saturday in March. So stay tuned uh, for their double feature. It is going to be epic. And then we will do a toast and I will bid you all a good evening. Thank you for that, Marissa. Thank you so much. Uh, you are so kind uh, and you have such a good heart. So I thank you for that. Um, you do, you do. Uh, and this is actually, so, uh, Marissa has this, uh, I think she thinks it's funny that I get a little bent out of shape when sometimes when poets do this really long ass preamble to the poem. Um, and it, it's a, a thing that a lot of poets. Long ass preamble to the poem. I am. <laughs> this is actually, this is more of a, think of this as more of a contextual setup for it. Think of it that way. Um. And uh, I'd, I'd seen enough of those preambles, especially online, to come up with this. And this is called Sue Chef's Kiss. This poem investigates the hierarchical meaning of my cultural cereal, 
As I lean into difficult structures to question the validity of 2% low-fat milk, in this poem, I digress from typical definitions of hamburger and explore the more penetrative nuances of hot dogs. With this poem, the counterculture's obsession with my pajamas becomes revealed, and intuitive remarks arising out of the dynamic interstices between me and your bed become altruistically, powerfully transgressive among the IKEA. This poem takes as its linguistic impulse the roots of my garbage, and the lyrics of this work interrogate my neighbor as a nominal curative with a carefully pejorative aim set built towards a hegemonistic thong, providing a cursory evaluation and an intuitive, problematic analysis of the stigma and shame that surrounds asparagus. This poem tasks the common experience with a banana, with shamelessly regarding those who experience such fruit in ways that populate an open mouth with the promise of elevated aliveness. This poem bravelessly pulls the curtain over the emancipation of a typical serving of mac and cheese, thus overcoming, indeed, in its own right, an intransigent society's predilection for corn on the cob, leisure, Yoga pants pulled tight and translucent over the values enlightened communities look to for moral and savage sustenance. And so therefore, a significant portion of this poem has dilated cervical understandings of lingerie to extreme soaked hybrids of hubris and potential within the dialectical confines of your mama thereby proving provincially that vast swaths of heuristic adult video stores cannot and will not accommodate a climate of intimidation when the general populace has no taste for it, them, us, a lollipop, or indeed the viewer. And it is here, at the intersection of divinity and peekaboo, a la Monte Video, I see the mountain, I see the mountain, wherein we find ourselves at long last horny, abject, fighting for non-existent rights within that sesame-toasted lumberjack nail salon, nay, further, on behalf of that high-priced escort that dwells in all of us, even though fear is what makes us Walmart, makes us spring a bone, fling a bushwash, makes us mayonnaise the ham speculum more deeply than anything we know in this world, but those of us who are courageous enough to challenge the foregone climacticisms inherent in both the box of Jimmy Dean's frozen sausage and in the conglomerate tricycles of institutional sugarless dysphoreplay will doubtedly survive the difference with a brilliant gleam in the newfound groin of equitable just barbecues and a renewed hope for next Thursday. A kind of sous chef's kiss, if you will. Thank you. Woo! <laughs> yes. Uh ho. -huh. Let's go. Let's go. I couldn't see my mouse. I'm like, where's my mouse? I need to click the mouse. Uh, Star Child, you should probably be a little excited. Uh, that would be helpful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, right? I mean, Star Child, you, yeah, you would love Rich and his work, and he's amazing. So, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, yeah. Most kind. I have we, to say, if I can quickly say, uh nemo uh i want to say i hope you're listening i am i remain and i continue to be excited about our double feature coming up um it is it is preternatural it is uncanny and nearly um it is nearly spooky that marissa had the intuition to pair us up for the upcoming feature Okay, so like straight up, uh, I'm I'm an empath and I'm spooky as fuck. So like, when I pair poets, I know what I'm doing, uh, and I love that that Nemo and Rich um, kind of came into the forefront um, at the at the same time when, and I was like, oh my god, they would make the best uh, features together. Uh, I don't know why I didn't think of it as towards the end of last year, other, other than the fact that we were just booked, like we booked three, four months ahead of time. So the fact that there maybe just wasn't room back when I had the thought and there is room now. And so now they're gonna be featured in March. Like, 
Yeah, and Rich didn't know anything about Nemo. Nemo didn't know anything about Rich. And I was like, this is so exciting for me. <laughs> you know what, uh, Marissa, I, I'll, I'll just interject that um, I, I certainly could not speak for the man. Uh, but I did mention to Nemo that I, I don't think it would be entirely inappropriate for us to coordinate our clothing for our double yeah. feature together. Yeah, oh my God, like totally whatever you want to do, you should just do. Um, I mean, let's go. The, the features that, that I put together are, I, I, in my humble opinion, which is not, it's not everything, but it's what I like, which tends to be apparently what everyone else in this community likes, which I don't know, I think everyone else just has good taste and I'm learning from those around me. Uh, but yes, uh, it, it's, it's a match made in heaven um, tonight, you know, two powerhouse women, uh, both intellectuals, both highly educated, like like their work is is so emotive and it, it, like there was no one else to pair these two with. So I was so excited for for uh, Tori Letts and Posa Vifalco to be featuring. And it, it's the same, it's the same every time, every time we get features, like we have William Washington and Mr. Speaker coming up. We, uh, you know, the, the last time we had a Vacha and, uh, and, and Baba Ngoma Hill, like if you did not watch that feature, straight up y'all need to go and educate yourself a little and watch their feature from last month that was phenomenal uh yeah prince mcnally like it it doesn't stop it is inc incredible poetry here at the word is right i mean we're online which not everyone gets to find us but those who do uh, I, I guarantee you every show is going to be worth it. Uh, they are all amazing. Uh, we do post these shows on our Facebook page. You can share the video with anyone. They do not have to have a Facebook account to access the video. We also do share it to our YouTube page. So if you would like to like, share, subscribe, follow all that good stuff on YouTube, that helps us build our numbers so we can access more people. But yeah, it's it's just amazing. Uh, Rich and Nemo, are, I cannot wait for your feature. Uh, shit, I can, will will coordinate my wardrobe even if you <laughs> if you ask nicely. I'll coordinate my wardrobe uh, to the two of you. Uh, that would be a lot. You of sure? Fun. You oh, sure I'm, you want to do that? Uh, I'm sure, and you know I'm sure. Uh, you, you just got to figure out how you're going to go and ask the question. Uh, yes. Uh, so the brass ring. All right. Uh, otherwise, let's go. Uh, we're going to go sing karaoke tonight. Anyone who is in Albuquerque wants to come uh, sing karaoke with us tonight, um, mainly uh, Rich Boucher. Uh, let us know because that's what we're going to sing. Uh, all right. So let's do a uh, let's do one final unmute. Give a big round of applause for our double features this evening. Poe Sophia Falco and Tori Lutz. Thank you. How good they're friends. Uh, go get their books if you're not Yay. sure. If you're not sure how to get their books, go to the web, go to the word is right, please. Links to their books are there, or message us or reach out to us and Google them. You'll find them. They're all over. Uh, get their book, please. And don't forget to tip the artist this evening. All right, here you go. Let's do a tip. Let's do a cheers. Does everyone have a glass? get a glass even if it's just a pretend they're towards pretend glass but it, you know what you can have whatever you want in that pretend glass and that makes all the difference there all you right. go <laughs> i'll carry on <laughs> all right here we go here's to health in your company and one for the lasses let's drink and be merry all of our glasses let's drink and be merry that thoughts to refrain for we may or may not ever all be here again. This has been the Word is Right Saturday double feature open mic featuring Tori Lutz and Poe Sophia Falco. I'm your host, Marissa Prada. Thank you so much for being here. See you next time. Peace. Cheers. <laughs>